Hello and greetings. This is Brother Minister again. Thank you for coming to part 11. Part 11 in Unmasking Black Christian Nationalism. It's time to remove the lies and the masks of deception, religious deception, apostasy, and all the damnable doctrines of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. Okay, and before I go further, let me tell you, I don't want you to think this is something that's coming from me. All you have to do is open your Bible. It doesn't even have to be yours. Just open a Bible to Second Peter. Okay? Because these are not my words. I didn't write these words. These words were given to us by the Holy Apostles under the unction of the Holy Spirit of God. Okay? It's not Brother Minister's words. Don't get mad at me. Okay? But you know, I spent 12 and a half years of my life, my prime years, under false damnable doctrines, under the lies and deception, so much covert apostasy and overt apostasy. But you know what? I did not have the word of God. I did not have the love or the knowledge. I didn't want the word of God. So, hey. I bought into BCN Theology hook, line, and sinker. I'm not going to lie to you. I enjoyed being a black Christian nationalist. I loved it because I could still do fleshy things. I could still have sex if I wasn't married. As long as I was in an official relationship. Okay? And that's something I'll cover shortly, Lord willing. Okay? I could still drink liquor. I never was a liquor drinker before I even came to the church. But it's so prevalent and it's so available. I've seen so many people come into church who were virgins. Okay? There's alcohol and sexually. But alcoholic, they come in, they, didn't, they weren't drinkers. But it's a, a communal experience. That's what they do. That's how it is. And if you don't drink, you kind of disdain a little bit. They won't. They won't pick at you too much. They just make a little fun of you. But it's pernicious. Those are pernicious, damnable doctrines. I enjoy being in, in the carnality of that church. But it's sin. It is wrong. And you know that it's wrong. But you have become so accustomed to it. You like it because it appeals to your flesh. Just like it appealed to my flesh. But God is calling you to holiness and true righteousness away from apostasy and wickedness and darkness. God is a holy God, people. He's not a big ball of cosmic energy floating around in the cosmos. Oh, my goodness. It's time to remove the mask. Second Peter chapter 2. And I left off at, uh, let's see, let's go to verse Number nine, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. Some of you will escape the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church by the grace of God. Some of you already have. I've spoken to some. I've chatted with some on Facebook. Some have already received the truth of the gospel. Okay? I know y'all call the truth of the gospel some slave theology. You've been tricked and deceived. Okay? <laughs> the, the meaning of the scripture is the scripture. Don't get it twisted. Like I said, BCN theology, the, the, they lied to us. They told us you, there's a, have, you have to have the private the BCN interpretation. The Apostle Peter already told us there is no private interpretation of Scripture. But in this verse number 9 right here, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Some of you will be called into righteousness. Unfortunately, some of you won't. Some of you are going to be judged by God and to be punished because you are going to continue to walk in what Jeremiah has given you over what the apostles of Christ have given you. You're going to continue to let the BCN program 
in all of its many doctrines, rituals, and sacraments. You're going to let those continue to dictate your life over the word of God? You will be judged. You will be judged. I know this sounds like a lot, a lot of foolishness because the preaching of righteousness is foolishness to them that perish. If this sounds like foolishness to you, that's because you're, you're perishing, my friend. But you don't have to. The meaning of the scripture is the scripture. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. That's right. Okay. Number 10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh. Okay. And the lust of uncleanness. And despise government. Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Okay. Them that walk after the flesh. Okay. I'll say it real quick. One damnable thing that, and I enjoyed it, and if you're looking at me, some of you rem may remember me. I was in lots of different relationships. I was carnal. I wasn't saved. I was a sinner. But BCN theology does not have anything. It, 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 you, you, you can't atone for sin. You can't with BCN theology. You only do your penance, your rituals, and your sacraments. The blood atonement, uh, the blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ covers my sins. That stuff is washed away, is covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. But nothing in BCN theology can make you free from sin. It only allows you and it permits you because they have a theology that allow a twisted Christianity that allows them to still be carnal. Okay. That's walking after the flesh. And the relationships. Okay, you may be looking at this video. You may not know how it works in the Pan African Orthodox Christian Church. Here's Johnny right here. Here's Sister Susie right here. Well, their names would be that. I'm just hypothetically speaking. They this brother here wants a relationship with this sister. So he writes up a letter and it goes before the executive committee, the executive board. I don't know what they're calling it now, but if once they approve that relationship, the church says, okay, look at them as man and wife or whatever they want to be. They can have all the sex you want to. You can live together, shack up. No one is going to correct you about that. It's not holiness. It's flesh. It's carnality. Okay? Two months later, you decide you don't want to be in that relationship anymore. Hey, just write up another letter. Send it to the executive board. They approve it. You get out of that relationship. Hop right back into another with another sister or brother in the church. And it continues. It perpetuates itself and people sleeping around with so am I lying? You tell me am I am I lying? You know I'm not lying. And there's so much promiscuous sex and so much oh my goodness, adultery and fornicating. I never heard flee from fornication. You know why? Because the Apostle Paul taught that. Oh my goodness, I forgot. You disdain everything that the Apostle Paul taught because you said he wasn't an official apostle, which was a lie that I've already covered in this series in a previous video. Okay? I never heard flee from fornication. They only told me that I violated Section 3 of the BCN Code. The BCN Code has more preeminence, it has more authority than the law of God. Okay? That didn't mean anything to me because I'm a sinner. I was driven by lust, walking in the flesh. And so are so many of you because it is not in your theology to walk, walk in holiness, true righteousness, and sanctification. Okay? And purity, which is found in Christ. Oh my goodness, I'm running out of time again. But Chiefly those that walk in the flesh. Okay? And when the relationship is violated, now if this brother here decides he want to have sex with a sister over here and it has not been authorized by the church, then he's violated the code. But it's still fornication. This brother minister, he got to come to the next video because I'm getting ready to tell you some more. It's time to take off the mask. See ya, brother minister.